Do you know that there is an imaginary line that divides China into two drastically different landscapes? One paints a picture of advanced urbanization, and the other, simply barren. To tone down this contrast, China has a big plan. A plan that defies nature. What are they up to? Well, let's find out. The Chinese undertaking is dubbed as the South to North Water Diversion Project, and is supposed to divert 44.8 billion cubic meters of water annually. The project was approved 51 years ago, and for its handling, a special limited liability company was created to overlook the project, and each province was required to set up a water supply company to manage the local administration and infrastructure works. The project consists of different routes, each to supply and transfer water into different regions, and each route is a mega project on its own. If we talk about the mechanism in detail, the Eastern Route Project was envisioned to provide a crucial water supply to Shandong Province and the northern part of the Jiangsu. Initially scheduled for completion in 2007, a year ahead of the planned timeline, this route aimed to connect Shandong with the mighty Yangtze River, enabling water transport northward to the Huanghui High Plain through the renowned Beijing Hangzhou Grand Canal. However, despite these grand aspirations, the project faced unexpected delays. The water diversion began by redirecting a significant branch of the Yangtze River near the city of Yangzhou. From there, the water embarks on a journey along existing river channels, traversing the picturesque Weishan Mountains of Shandong. Eventually, the diverted waters need to cross the formidable Yellow River, which was accomplished through the construction of a tunnel, allowing the water to flow onwards to the city of Tianjin. In its entirety, the completed eastern route diversion was stretched slightly over 1,155 kilometers. To facilitate the efficient movement of water, the project required the construction of 23 pumping stations, boasting an installed capacity of 453.7 megawatts in the initial phase alone. Furthermore, the existing seven pumping stations will undergo rehabilitation and upgrading to complement the new infrastructure. This segment of the project also includes the implementation of nearly 9 kilometers of tunnels, beginning at the outlet of the Dongping Lake and ending at the inlet of the Weiling Canal. Notably, this includes a remarkable 634 meter long siphon section, in addition to two horizontal tunnels measuring 9.3 meters in diameter, strategically positioned 70 meters below the Huangwei Riverbed. The central route, also known as the middle route of the South to North Water Diversion Project, connects the Jiajianko Reservoir located on the Han River, which is a tributary of the Yangtze River, to Beijing. To facilitate this water transfer, the Jiajianko Dam's height was increased from 162 meters to 176.6 meters above sea level. Consequently, the water level in the reservoir rose from 157 meters to 170 meters above sea level. This elevation change allowed the water to flow naturally downhill through the water diversion canal, aided by gravity, towards the lower elevation of the canals. The central route, often referred to as the Grand Aqueduct, spans across the expansive North China Plain. Its construction was planned in a way that gravity acts as the driving force to propel water flow from the Daijianko Reservoir all the way to Beijing, eliminating the need for pumping stations. A major engineering challenge faced during this route's development was the construction of two tunnels under the Yellow River to accommodate the canal's flow. Construction on the central route began in 2004, and by 2008, the northern section spanning 307 kilometers was completed at a cost of $2 billion. Notably, water for this stretch of the canal is not sourced directly from the Han River, but from reservoirs located in the Hebei province, south of Beijing. To facilitate the water transfer to Beijing, farmers and industries in Hebei had to reduce their water consumption. The central route's path can be observed on Google Maps, with notable locations including the canal's intake at the Dai Jianko Reservoir, its crossings of the Beihe River, the Sheha River, Ying River, and the Yellow River upstream from Zhengzhou. Eventually, the canal reaches the southwestern suburbs of Beijing in the Zhuma River Valley in Zhengzhou, Hebei. In the earlier stages, the entire project was expected to be completed around 2010, but the final completion took place in 2014 to accommodate additional environmental protections along the route. The impact of the Han River, particularly downstream of the Daijianko Dam, became a major concern, as approximately one-third of the water was diverted from this source. A potential long-term solution under consideration involves constructing another canal to divert water from the Three Gorges Dam to the Daijianko Reservoir. On December 12, 2014, the middle leg of the South to North Water Project, the world's largest water transfer project, 
was officially open. The resettlement of approximately 330,000 individuals who were residing near the Daijangho Reservoir, as well as along the canal's route, became another major bottleneck for the project. Starting on October 18, 2009, Chinese officials began relocating residents from the affected areas in the Hebei and Na provinces. This completed canal route stretches approximately 1,264 kilometers, initially providing an annual water transfer of 9.5 cubic kilometers. By 2030, the water transfer is expected to increase to 12 to 13 cubic kilometers annually. However, in dry years, the annual transfer amount will be lowered, with a minimum of 6.2 cubic kilometers guaranteed at a rate of 95%. To ensure the drinkability of the water, industries are prohibited from establishing operations within the reservoir's watershed. The western route has remained in the shadows ever since its original plan. Encompassing the formidable Qinghai Tibet Plateau, situated at elevations ranging from 3,000 to 5,000 meters above sea level, it was slated to commence construction in 2010. But there were many delays due to the cost and the fact that this project could affect neighboring countries. This ambitious endeavor, though, is poised to tackle substantial engineering and climatic hurdles. The ultimate goal, expected to be achieved by 2050, is to transport a staggering 4 billion cubic meters of water from three tributaries of the Yangtze River, the Tongtian, Yalong, and Dadu Rivers, across a span of nearly 500 kilometers, traversing the formidable Bayankala Mountains before reaching northwest China. All of this, of course, comes at a huge cost. In 2008, the projected construction expenses for the eastern and central routes amounted to a staggering 254.6 billion yuan, which is equivalent to 37.44 billion US dollars. However, the government allocated a budget of only 53.87 billion yuan, representing less than a quarter of the total estimated cost at that time. This budget allocation included 26 billion yuan from the central government and special accounts, 8 billion yuan from local governments, and additionally nearly 20 billion yuan in loans. By 2008, approximately 30 billion yuan had already been expended on the construction of both the eastern and central routes, with 5.66 billion yuan allocated for the eastern route and 24.82 billion yuan for the central route. Notably, the expenses associated with these projects have experienced a significant surge, surpassing initial estimates. Today, the estimated overall cost of the projects is somewhere around $62.6 billion without considering the billions of dollars the Chinese government would need to maintain the canal operations. All of this discussion leaves us scratching our heads and wondering why China would undertake a project of that magnitude. Well, while the Indian government is worried if China could successfully alter the flow of water, China is already reaping many benefits. The project has played a crucial role in addressing drought challenges in the northern regions and mitigating flooding issues in the southern areas. This engineering feat stands as a source of immense national pride and has the potential to attract tourists who appreciate such remarkable accomplishments. Moreover, the newfound access to water has become a lifeline for sustaining vital industries and infrastructure in the northern areas, which heavily rely on water for their operations. Additionally, the availability of water resources opens up opportunities for engaging in water-based recreational activities, further enhancing the quality of life for local communities and visitors alike. The time when this project was conceived, northern China was serving as a hub for population growth, industrial development, and agriculture. As all three sectors continue to expand, the per capita share of regions' limited water resources naturally dwindled. Consequently, a cycle of overexploiting groundwater emerged, with urban and industrial needs often taking precedence over agricultural demands. Unfortunately, this pattern resulted in severe water shortages in rural areas. Recognizing the urgent need to address the water scarcity crisis, the concept of the South to North Water Project was initially proposed by late chairman Mao Zedong in 1952. His visionary idea aimed to alleviate the growing water shortages experienced in Beijing, Tianjin, in the northern Hebei, Henan, and Shandong provinces. If he were alive today, he would have witnessed his idea shaping a new and bright future for the country. Of course, we'd like to know what are your thoughts on this project? Tell us in the comments section below. And do you know that there is a billion dollar tunnel resting below the surface of Chicago? To learn more about it, be sure to click on the video link popping up.